Hello and welcome everyone back to yet another episode, podcast installment, video, whoever you guys are watching or listening to this, this is Red Cape Sports. My name is Bird Bouchard, host, founder, everything like that, and this is the man typically behind the scenes, but regardless, we like him here. You, forgot a, you forgot a few things. What did I forget? The myth, the legend? No, not the man, the myth, or the legend, but regardless, um, this is going to be a new segment that we're doing here uh think of it much like a podcast so again if you guys are watching on youtube thanks for watching uh if you guys mm -hmm. are just browsing around in the mall or doing whatever you're doing maybe listening to us in the car we probably sound hot as hell in the car you know that's probably cool but regardless i don't know I it's don't a know. podcast uh you guys can watch us you guys can listen to us uh links will be down below in the in the description yeah for How whatever will you guys they be able to do. find us yeah so uh we're gonna be on spotify and apple music for listening to us nice. and then of course on our YouTube channel Red Cape Sports. Yeah. So I'm going to be handling the the visuals, Bird's going to be handling the audio side. Which I is got the easy sweet. job. But but it is pretty sweet. It's a good I, I think it's a good idea. We'll be able to get a lot lot more content more consistently. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of video, we're going to be doing long form cutting up segments so we have a list of videos and it's something that we can do cuz honestly we appreciate everybody that's been part of this journey. It's been Yeah. We're, we've got, what, almost 300 videos, something we, like that? We, uh, we've eclipsed. So we have more than half a million views, which is just wow. mind-boggling to me. That's pretty cool. Um, I checked my email and saw that last week. So I'm sure we have more now, but yeah. uh, you guys are awesome. Um, one more thing that I want to say before we kind of jump into this. You guys always send us questions. So moving forward, we're actually going to have like topics and ideas based on your guys' questions. So again, if you guys are listening to this, you know, hop on YouTube or whatever you're doing. Send us some questions and we'll be more than happy to discuss them. Um, with that being said, we're going to move into our first topic, Mitch. Yeah. Because as we film this, Christmas is just five days away, which means the mm -hmm. World Juniors are six days away. We're both Canadian. We grew yeah. up, we were playing mini sticks, breaking stuff all throughout the house, always watching Don Cherry, Rock'em, Sock'em, Bop'em, Top'em, Hockey, whatever that, yeah, whatever true. you want to call it. Yeah. Um, so, dude, the World Juniors are six days away, and I think, I'm going to go out on a limb here, Team Canada, every year they're hyped, but I think this year they win and dominate. It's one of the most I, complete teams, man. Yeah. I think they'll do well. It depends on their goalie, for sure, but Connor Bedard, I know we want to bring him up. I see the photo there. That's why we're, yeah. Um, I was wondering why you had, like, a teenager on your on your computer there. <laughs> I mean, he's 17. Yeah, he does look like he's just getting out of the sixth grade, but um, he's a really good hockey player. He's got the hands. He's got the speed. I mean, he does kind of look like the hockey player. He's got the look. What doesn't he have? Um, but he definitely has the point. So definitely, if this guy is going to be a huge part of the offensive lineup for Team Canada, it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as long as he doesn't cry like Crybaby Crosby, it may even take things to the next level. Yeah, so for those of you who just don't really understand hockey or don't really follow kids while they're prospects. Let me tell you what, this kid last year got exceptional status, actually two years ago, he got exceptional status. So typically speaking, you need to be a certain age to play in the OHL or the Western Hockey League where he's currently in. So when he was just 15, he got exceptional status to grant him to be able to play in that league. Uh, so when he was 15, this guy had 12 goals in 15 games, yeah. 28 points in 15 games. Uh, you know, the next year in 2021, 51 goals, 49 assists for 100 points in 62 games. And this year, he's almost got a goal a game. So he's got 27 goals in 28 games, 64 points. More importantly, though, like I said with the World Juniors, last year the guy had four goals, four assists for eight points in seven games. This kid is incredible. He's going to be playing probably with... Uh, it remains to be seen, as at least as of the recording of this video, if Mason McTavish is going to join him. Mm. But I'll tell you what, I'm a New York Rangers fan. Brendan Othman's going to be on the team. They're just stacked. They're, they're loaded. And if you think of how much hype a guy like Connor McDavid had when he played in this tournament, Cindy Crosby, yeah. John Tavares, all these guys, well, now it's his turn. And then a few months after that, he's going to get drafted. So anyway, all this to say, I want your prediction. How many points is he going to put in this tournament? That's a good question. I How think he's going to do. I think he's going to do really good. Um, let alone if, if I think they can win. 
But in terms of goals, he's at least going to get a goal a game. Ooh. How many games will they play total? Well, last year they played seven, so you're looking at seven. around seven. I'm thinking 10 or 11 goals. Jeez. 10 or 11 goals, crazy. which would be pretty good. And, 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 and I believe that pretty conservatively. 10 or 11 goals, but also eight or nine assists. So I think he's going to get 20 points. Oh, I think wow. he's going to. I think he's going to get 20 crazy. points, which is a lot for like just. Oh, a few I think games. I think he can do it though. You know, I mean, he's when, that good. When you look at a guy like John Tavares, who in one game put up like seven points. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it. You really need to beat the the Austrias, the the Germanys, and those weaker teams. But I think he can do it, and ultimately, I think he's going to really succeed. Now, the second part with this is. This is his draft year. So he's getting drafted. He's, we still yeah. got months and months to go, right? He's not getting drafted till the summer. But I want to bring this up, Mitch, because we need to know. Because here at Red Cape Sports, we discuss sports cards. His young yeah. gun is still a long ways away. It's about more than a year away. But I, for the sake of doing this, where could this man go? As I bring up the standings here in the Eastern Conference, mm -hmm. Ottawa Senators, Canadian franchise, they're not good. Just ahead of them, Montreal Canadiens, that would be incredible, yeah. right? Playing with Cole Caulfield, playing with uh, uh, Slikovsky, playing with a bunch of playmakers, Nick Suzuki. He could go on Toronto, play with Matthews. No, they're doing way too well. They are doing well. They're doing see, way see, too well. See, I got well. him to admit it. Toronto's so pretty legit. This is going to be a lottery pick. Um, who yeah. else? I think what we don't want to see is him to land on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Terrible hockey market yeah, in American I'd market. Feel, I'd feel terrible. You know, yeah, we, we just don't want that. We don't want that. His it, cards would be cheaper, though. Uh, would they be cheaper? Oh, absolutely. If, if it, so, yeah. so actually, if the first round, first pick went on a not so, like like not an original six team, like Columbus. does that bring down the value of the absolutely. card? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that could be an opportunity. Right. That could be an opportunity. Original six teams have been around longer, therefore they have more fans, and mm -hmm. they're just established more, uh, and there's something prestigious, right? A lot of coaches and players yeah. want to play for an original six team. So if he goes to Columbus, that's not good for the growth of hockey. Yeah, it's kind of it's like not. being on L.A. if you're in basketball. Right. So for those of you that are, you know, you're, you're not Canadian, you're more American side, that is a big deal, being on, mm -hmm. you know, an original six team. You got Chicago. You've got Toronto, you've got uh, Montreal, you've got the Bruins, you've got... Rangers? The Rangers. And, and the Red Wings. The Red Wings, yeah. So I do know, I do know. Yeah. Um, so those are the, the Eastern Conference teams. Heading to the West, Arizona Coyotes. Yikes. Shane Wright almost went there. Of course, yeah. they passed up on him. Um, for those of you who don't know, I don't even know if Mitch knows, to be honest. The Arizona Coyotes are currently playing at Arizona State University. I didn't know they that. They don't even... I didn't know that. They couldn't pay the rent. Really? They couldn't pay the rent. I'm so not paying it for them. They're currently playing in front of 2,000 fans, 2,500 fans. So the players don't like it. If you're a fan, you love it because... Is that, is that a WNBA team or...? Basically. Yeah. Um, he could also go to the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah. Original sixteen. That would be that would be sweet. You know what I could Chicago. See that. I, I could see that. I could see that they they need some help. Yeah. And then as long as he doesn't drive around, you know, yeah. it might be a card. Where, where I want to see him land. Um, currently, this team through thirty two games, they're nine twenty and three. They only have twenty one points. They're awful. Uh, their goals against one hundred and thirty five goals against, just seventy nine goals for. Anaheim Mighty Ducks. I think this mm. would be brilliant because a you're playing with Trevor Zegras, playing with yeah. Mason McTavish, who we know he's got chemistry with from the World Juniors. And more importantly, we grew up watching the Mighty Ducks movies. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Sure, that was huge. Sure, you're playing on the West Coast, but you know what? Someone's got to play on the West Coast. So it's not good in terms of like you want to play on the East Coast where New York and all these people are awake to watch you. You don't want people in New York to have to watch you up until 2 in the morning. Yeah. But regardless... Um, what do you think, Mitch? If he let, let's say he lands to uh, to the Ducks, what do you think his card would be opening night? I think his young okay. guns. Of his course. young gun. Okay, when his young gun comes out, I see it being like one forty to one fifty, and that's for a raw. That's after like a few days. Initially, I think people it's going to be hyped. I think it's going to be two fifty to three hundred bucks. I but, think more. So I think I think you're better off being patient. Because if it comes out and he is dominant right away, 
it's not like he's going to go from 300 to 1,000 right away. No. I think the big opportunity is to identify him now, pick him up in the offseason, and I know that may be risky, but yeah. the problem is he may not even perform, et cetera. So I think you're going to have to be patient. At least okay. wait a week in, no. in Justify. But I agree. I think he's going to be two, 300 bucks, but I also believe that you know he still has to prove himself. He still right. has to be good because anything can ha be happen. Lafreniere was a bust for that year. For the year, thing is bust for the year, but I'll give it to you. Whatever. He didn't. He didn't perform that well his first year, but no. he's playing better. I still think he's good. His card price is right around sixty-five bucks right now, American. Yeah. So I well lost money. down, well down. I I'll tracked the guy. There, there I had up. a guy meet me at Tim Hortons, and I bought the card off of him, and he's like, "You just meet people like this?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." It's what we do. We, we always meet at so. Timmy's. Let us know, too, in the comments below, if you're listening to this in audio. Have, where's the craziest place you've ever met somebody? I've met, some, I've, I've met somebody at the mall. And to buy was, cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I was, no, no, I was selling cards. I was selling Pokemon okay. cards. So, by and, the way, we, we only want the craziest place you've met someone to buy or sell cards. I don't care about none of that other Tinder meetup stuff. Yeah, exactly. For clarification. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, this is for card, like card dealings. So I met with this person and then they didn't show up. So I'm like, whatever, no problem. Somebody else is like, oh, come to my house. So I went to this house and I'm like, you know what? Like, this is weird. It's I didn't weird. get their name. I didn't get their contract. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Nobody's going to kidnap me. Like, I'm pretty heavy. But like, yeah, like I've I've done some crazy deals just to make like five, ten bucks. That's crazy. Yeah. I've... Flip game was on point. That That's, that's when crazy. I was, that's when I was in like full on flip mode. Yeah. You know? So yeah, like I said, that's. That's the first topic that we have here. Connor Bedard, the most yeah. hyped prospect since 2015 in Connor McDavid. Um, where is he going to go? Where? What are, what are his card prices going to be? There's so many question marks, but yeah, again, we just want to get the ball rolling because yeah. it's so fun and he's so fun to watch. But regardless, that's topic number one. Also in recent news, this happened on Sunday today as we record this is Tuesday, so it's very fresh. Not mm -hmm. sure if you've seen the videos, but you can't move if you're in Argentina right now because finally, potentially in his last time ever, the GOAT, at least in my opinion, Lionel Messi ends up winning the World Cup, finally. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are saying this was the trophy that he needed in order to be the GOAT. He got it. But now, those same people who want to bring him down, all those haters are now saying, well, you know, most of his goals were penalty kicks. That Regardless, happens, yeah. people are always going to find things to say. My question to you, first and foremost, is he the GOAT? Is he the GOAT? Because you also have Ronaldo, you have Ronaldinho, you have um, so many guys. You got Pele. So what I'm saying is, is Lionel Messi the GOAT? First I did have one thing to say. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Mbappe score three goals? Yes. He got a hat trick. Um, a lot of times it's dependent on the team that you have in the situation. I wouldn't call him the GOAT. I think Mbappe, because of his age, and just when I think about who's the best of the best, I'm not saying Messi is not the best, but I think we have to wait because I think Mbappe is going to be proving himself. My prediction is Mbappe, he's going to win one within the next three years. Well, Before Mbappe 2026. almost won back to back. I, yeah, but yeah, but another one is another what I mean. one. Yeah. So you think that's what I mean? Like he's you think that France is going to make back to back to back World Cup finals and win two out of the three? That's insane. Yeah, of course. Yeah, with oh Mbappe, look what he already did. He oh did that a lot of it himself. So he got three goals. To say the thing is, like he he is definitely you know winning was was big, but I would I would put Mbappe like right there and he's so young and yeah but not of all time i mean all time mm -hmm. all time I resume know, i know i think he's the goat i will okay i think he is now but i i don't think it's gonna last more than five ten years so but he is I, I would say yes so what you you're know saying what? is will mbappe say yes. will eventually surpass him exactly wow. so yeah so exactly it's messy now messy definitely right now especially if you look at this time like to say brady's not the best is hard to say now. I'm just saying because of what he's done. Yep. He's 45 years old playing. We'll talk about that later. But like, you you got to give it to Messi right now. Oh, for sure. At this time, even a couple years from now, you may say that. But Mbappe is catching up, and that's just coming from somebody that doesn't even that's know fair. much about soccer. But that's just apparent to me. That makes sense. 
Yeah, so. Mbappe is definitely good. So um, but, you know, you mentioned that he scored a hat trick, and I'll say mm -hmm. this Messi scored two. Messi scored the game, game tying goal, or, you know, it, it was just incredible his performance that he had. Yeah. Uh, Lionel Messi was incredible. So, anyway, I wanted to quickly bring this up here on Card Ladder. Uh, this is 2004 Panini Sports, uh, it's the Mega Cracks. Yeah. He's got a lot of rookies. This is kind of like the go-to. Wait, um, first off, first off, Bert, Bert asked me, he's like, hey, man, like, maybe we should go 50-50 on a card. I'm like, cool, man. I was kidding, obviously. <laughs> and then I'm looking at the price. I'm like, Bert, do you even have five grand? Like, No. Yeah. No. I, I don't have five grand just to buy, like, a messy yeah. card. So, anyway, I thought it was interesting. You know, this is kind of the card to have. In PSA 10 format, there's only 53 of them. Um, as we click on it here. I was, I was obviously joking, but I'm like, it's down. Because at one point, this card sold for $12,000, and now it's, you know, $9,900. Um, but regardless, you know, mm -hmm. what, what do you think winning this World Cup does to the overall Lionel Messi? Because I, I think it's easy to say, well, you know, his card prices are going to go up. But when you actually do data dives and when you watch videos such as Sports Card Investor, yeah. soccer and mainly cards as a whole... Since basically 2021, they've been trending downwards. And I thought that the World Cup would have done better. Yeah. But regardless, there's a lot of cards, soccer cards, of guys that did really well in this World Cup. And they're kind of trending downwards. Yeah. So what does that mean moving forward? I, I don't really know, but I don't think it's good. It's understanding pop reports and all those things. Like, you look at basketball, which we're going to talk about here in a second. You have guys like Zion Williamson performing well. I own a lot of Zion cards. His cards aren't moving. His cards are not moving. And so I'll tell you, I, I have his out of 99 certified card, PSA mm. 10. That card has just been going down. Even though his performance, he's not injured, he's looking Crazy. good. Um, you have to understand that there is a lot of card printing going on. Myself, I haven't been buying a lot of cards. That's because I think mm. I think we need I think we need a bit of time for you know the water to you know, kind of get flushed out because there's a lot happening right now. Even if you look at the, the card market, we were at a high. Like you bring up the COVID, when COVID happened, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Like everything went up yep. and now we're kind of consolidating. We're finding our ground. So just be prepared for card prices to tank a little bit more. But then you want to, this is the time to buy though. This, this is what I mean. Hmm. Even though card prices are not soaring right now, the idea is that we've hit new highs, we're consolidating, it's just like any other investment in the world right now. The oh. moment the moment we start to bottom, which I think we are, yep. that's when you get in. When people are panicking, you get in, mm. because when the next bull run happens, that's where you see the gains. The gains don't happen when we're at the top and everybody's drinking yes. champagne and sparkling water. It doesn't matter, you know what I mean? Now is the time to get in. I'm yeah. being very serious about this. If you're bullish on Zion, Buy him now. you should be buying him now. If the card prices are going up, if you're bullish on Judge, bring that up. Mm -hmm. We should be buying Judge right now. Yeah, yeah, the, and we'll talk about that. But I just want to backtrack a little bit because, like yeah. you said with Connor Bedard, right? You said hold out on him, and here's why you hold out. Because I'm bringing this up first and foremost. Zion Williamson. Perhaps. It depends Panini on Prism. how much his card is. No, but, but, but just hear me out, out with yeah. this thought, right? Yeah. His 2019 Panini Prism, PSA 10, number 248, okay? It's the one of him like this with the ball dunking. Pop Report, 22,240 graded PSA 10s. That's not SGC. That's not that's Beckett. Absurd. That's not 9s. That's not 8s. There are so many of these, right? Yeah. Now, when this card first came out, look at the high. Look at this. $965, and then it started trending downwards. Uh, and then April 10th of 2021, which is not that long ago, $681. Um, more recently, October 4th of this year in 2022, yeah. $204. And today, it's down to right around... 130. It's down 40%, basically. So it's it's drastically down. Um, we can see here, over the last two years, the rate of growth is negative 86%. Over the last year... And we've said this. We've said this count. Even I've said this. I'm a huge Zion fan. I said, I love Zion, but his card prices feel high. They yeah. are high. 
Because they just are. Yeah. It's just it just makes sense, right? So in the last year, it's down thirty two percent, which is sixty one dollars. In the last three months, it's down thirty three percent, which is again sixty five dollars. So anyway, my point is. Zion is now healthy, which he hasn't been for a while. Zion is continually, or pardon me, Zion is continuously performing at a high level. Yeah. And his card prices have taken a tank. So FOMO is a real deal. And I think we he, should talk about that. Yeah. Because what my point, There's just to wrap it up, here. is yeah, yeah. his card prices came out, like, don't buy them right away, right yeah. away. They came out so high. And they've crashed Look and up burned. his silvers. Look up his PSA 10 Prism Silver. So All right. there's another thing, though. There's there's value in scarcity, right? Because if there's 22,000 of these cards, think about it. You don't have any other athlete from 20 years ago that had 22,000 PSA 10 perfect cards like Gretzky. He's got like a few. So there's not a lot of scarcity. So is this a thing where you're, where his silver is, is acting the same? Let's see. Because that's where, you know, we could play on it. So it'd be the same, the same thing, just the two. It'd the be the same prism. number, same number, but silver. All right, let's see this. There you go, two forty-eight. That'd probably be it. All right. So, so we got it up here. Yeah. This is where I'm going to be curious as well. Um, and so, for those of you that don't silver. know, when it comes to Zion Williamson cards, his 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 main rookie, the one you want to get, the typical one, is going to be the Prism, the Prism two forty-eight. But then he also has the Prism silver. And then from there, they're numbered, and you have different variations. All right, so let's bring this And then this you up. have different, you know, 42 different printings that Panini did. That's another topic of conversation. Yeah. But see, here they're starting to Look climb. The pop. So the pop is significantly lower at yeah. 1,500. Which is 20 times lower almost. Like, that's 15 times lower. Yeah. So um, it's only down, down 20%. Okay, that's three months. How about a year, though? In one year... So he's still down. He's still down. It's crazy. But but the idea though is if you can afford it, try to get those numbers numbered cards because they will protect you a little bit more. They yeah. they really do. They really do hold their value, I would say, a little oh, bit more. For sure. That that's a good example of it. But again, you're right. There's still a lot of them. There's still a lot of silvers. In my mm. mind, that's a lot. Um, but I but I do also see it in my mind. If you if you're logical with it. Do you think there's 1,500 people that would want the best Zion card? Probably. But are there 22,000? No. That's where you're like, I don't know. No. So that eliminates the scarcity. I wouldn't even want it because at that point, it's like, well, everyone has it. And yeah. if, if you can get something that's easily, that's easily attainable... Why would it, you want it? Why would you want it almost, right? It's, it's, why it's does very everybody, much like that. Yeah, would you want Megan Fox if, if everybody else looked like that? No. no. Especially That's after what? MGK has her. Yeah, did you see his suit? We have to talk about that. <laughs> no. He had that hedgehog <laughs> suit on. Oh <laughs> this my. guy's crazy. This guy's yeah. crazy. He's a good singer, though. He, he makes good music. I'll oh, and I don't like him ever since he, he beefed with Eminem's daughter, Haley. Nope. Don't he like also him. beef with Eminem, and Eminem was like... Eminem destroyed yeah, him. Yeah, wrecked him. Wrecked, wrecked him. him. Why would you do that? That's like that's like me doing a TikTok and being like, LeBron James, you can't even dribble, you can't even shoot. <laughs> Let's go meet me one-on-one -on, -one on the court, being 5'10". Like, who yeah. does that? Yeah, no, so it's just a Dumb. joke. Dumb. Uh, what that's else like me got? calling out Messi, being like, big deal, you won the World Cup, I'm the big G, like, bro, like, like bro, could you imagine Messi doing one-on-one -on -one against me on soccer? You can't even kick a ball. That's not moving. I can kick a ball. Yeah, as long as it's not there's not too much moving or stuff. It's <laughs> bad. If he gives me a stick, if, we, if I can play with the stick, then I can. You'd beat him, him in hockey, but that's well, yeah. not saying anything. There you go. There it's you like go. beating LeBron in hockey. Yeah. So. Anyways, the point is, you want, you don't want to be doing that. All right, let's get to the next topic. So we got Aaron Judge. Bird has a baseball conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. Okay? This is a conspiracy. It's not Alex a conspiracy. Alex Jones got a hold of Bird, and he's like, Bird, I want to get you on my channel. I got this conspiracy about Darren Judge's balls. So talk about Judge's balls. All right. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about balls here on this podcast. Uh, so long story short, according to insiders Bradford William Davis, um, you know, basically they analyzed 204 game-used baseballs. From this previous 2022 season, uh, the Society for American Baseball Research award-winning uh, basically, research suggested that the league used three different baseballs. Now, I'm not just going to scroll through this and, and read it all, but long story short, okay, they used three different baseballs, including one which was like a Goldilocks ball. 
So first and foremost, you had a regular weighted baseball. Yep. And then you had a heavier baseball. And then the third baseball was a lighter baseball. It was actually former Detroit Tiger, Cy Young Award winner, future Hall of Famer. The guy is dating Kate Upton. We love him. Verlander. Just, Justin Verlander. Good for him. Was on the mound, career. and he realized, he threw the ball and said, when are you going to fix your effing baseballs? He knew right away, by this, just by picking it up, that the ball was heavier, okay? So keep that in mind. So anyway, to make this a long story short, it's actually about the lighter baseballs. They were about one to two grams lighter. So long story short, these lighter balls were found in three occasions. The Home Ooh. Run Derby, I have no issue with that. Home Run Derby's for the fans. Nothing's on the line other than the players itself, right? The second one where it was found to be used, and I do have an issue with this, the All-Star Game. That's the reason the why I have an issue with the All-Star Game yeah. is because the All-Star Game ultimately decides home field advantage in the playoffs. That's I'm insane. not a big fan of that. Yeah. The third one, okay, uh, okay, so here it says that the Goldilocks balls were uh, found at Goldie three locks. types of game slash events. And the third one, regular season games that use balls with special commemorative stamps on the outer leather, such as the Rangers' 50th anniversary ball. Okay, that doesn't mean anything, right? However, there was an exception. The only Goldilocks balls inside are obtained from the regular season that did not have commemorative stamps came from Yankees games at Yankee Stadium. I think we need to bring on Kanye and have this him talk about awful. that. This is awful, okay? No, we're not talking easy. But regardless, think about it. Aaron Judge just... A, in my honest, humble opinion, stole an MVP award away from Shohei Otani. Oh now, whether or not he knew about conspiracy. this, whether or not he knew about this, he stole it. He shouldn't have even won the MVP in, to begin with. But now, Aaron oh, Judge, Aaron know. Judge is hitting baseballs that are basically filled with helium and balloons and flying further. First and foremost, he's got a short porch out in uh, what is he? He's yeah, out in left field. He's yeah. got a short porch, right? The amount of home runs this guy hit mm -hmm. that, statistically speaking, if it were in like any other Major League Baseball ballpark, would have been outs. Yeah, so I you do got agree that. With that. I do agree you with also that. have, now it's a lighter baseball, meaning the pitchers are throwing harder. He's now got to basically square it up not nearly as well to hit a home run. There's all these different advantages. And the fact that it was only found at Yankees games... Yeah, he's also 6'9", like 270. He's big, I'm just though. saying, it was only found at Yankees mm -hmm. games in the year where he broke Roger Maris' home run record? I believe it's possible. Come I mean, on! You, you also do have the fact that baseball has been has been in trouble for a while in the sense that they've been boring. Like, And I played baseball in college and stuff, but like, baseball, Ridiculous. baseball is boring if there's no home runs. And this is coming from a pitcher, but it's true. Um, even I'm kind of, kind of excited. Somebody hits a bomb off you. It's like, oh, that looked kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, at the but end the of the day, the point is like, no, you, you could be right. Um, I don't know how true they found, dude. Uh, that's all I'm saying. The yeah, it's it's comment the down below is there. if you're watching this on YouTube. Comment down below if you think that they did cheat. And okay. what what are the odds right now based on the information I don't, that we have? Oh, it's like it's, is it's foolproof. It's foolproof. Like the, this is. Pretty much this like is phenomenal they tested, journalism. They tested game used balls, and they're like, this is lighter than every other... Correct. Now, with that being said, though, right, uh, per the report, how many balls did they obtain? I think they only obtained... Yeah, so they found um, balls from 22 ballparks, right? Why do they call it Goldilocks balls? What does that even mean in, the, in this case? Okay, but this is my thing. They found 204 game used balls. My research okay? has just so, gone off track. <laughs> That's the cover. That's the cover. But here's my thing. They found 204 balls, right? Yeah. From 22 stadiums. So that doesn't mean it's 100%, but what it means is there's a lot of proof and a lot of evidence that so far is cumulatively coming to a consensus. Yeah. So there's a lot of explaining left to be done. I, I, I want to clarify here. I don't think Aaron Judge knew. I think Aaron Judge just saw a ball. He just participated. Ball. However, did he benefit? Oh, yeah. Yes, he obviously. did. And regardless of this, so even if he never cheated and these balls were never yeah. used, Shohei should have won MVP. Because uh, uh, my last point here. It's debatable. No, but yeah. It's not debatable. Sammy it's, Sosa, we're debating it now. Sammy, Sammy Sosa hit 70 home runs. Burt McGuire hit 70 home runs multiple times. They were on steroids. Three. 
I don't care what Shohei Otani has done this season has never been accomplished. No. What Aaron Judge did has been accomplished six times. Six versus zero, I'll take the guy who did something that has never been accomplished before. Mm-hmm. It is tough Case to say. Case closed. Yeah, it is tough to say because Aaron Judge clearly cannot do what Shohei does, but I feel like Shohei can somewhat do what Otani does mm. in general. However, what I will say, though, is that offensively, Shohei did not do what Aaron Judge did in terms of hitting the long ball. People want that. So the thing is, is it more important to be better overall? And I understand the idea of the most valuable player, but you have to give it to Judge in terms of offensively, he was the best offensive player. But all around, mm. was he? Was he? No, I agree. So I think it's up for debate. And I think it was just, maybe it's just a better right. face at the time. Right, having that little uh, chip front tooth, having him smile. Plays on the, for the Yankees, on, isn't he on Time Magazine? Yeah, like he had the he had the best year of out of like a, he won like Athlete of the Year. He did not have the best year. It was Shohei. But offensively, 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 sure. At but the job. best overall year, he was not the best. Maybe at his job. it's advantageous. Maybe no. Shohei just needs to listen. Drop. Maybe Shohei needs to put the glove down and be like, you know what. I'm going to do one job now. No. And be the best Most at that one job. Most valuable That's fault. player. If you take away Aaron Judge from the New York Yankees yeah. last year, they still make playoffs. Yeah, but you got to be the best. They still make the playoffs. You got to be the best yeah. at that thing you're doing. If I if I do this show and then I start talking about pajamas and the, on the next YouTube and the next one, I'm not going to be good at any channel. So you, you got to pick, pick and choose. You absolutely could be. No, 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 no. You yeah, absolutely could Aaron, be. Well, well, Regardless. He, you could be, but he lost to Judge because Judge just hit the long ball, and maybe they were serving him up like tennis yeah. balls. Crazy. Anyways. Um, I will say this, though. Look at this. In the last year... One question, though. One question. Go ahead. Is this... If they did that, is that worse than the cheating no. from no. the Astros? No, because he wouldn't have known. Okay. Now, he wouldn't have known. Now, had he known... Uh, what's he going to do? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's check the baseball before you throw it to me. That is messed up on the pitchers, I think pitchers, there's a difference. Though. You take away that special glue. Oh, the, sp- the spider tack? You take away the spider tack, and then you and then you make the balls lighter. What a, what a criminal Rob offense Rob Manfred, to the you are the worst. They, literally, pitchers, <laughs> the worst. pitchers got good, and they're like, fine, we'll change the balls. Basically. Crazy. Um, back to the sports card realm, because that's exactly what we are here at Red Cape Sports. The last year, Aaron Judge cards are up 141%. That's what you want to see. Yeah. So if you correctly guessed, it started at $57.99, so $58, bucks, and it's currently $140. Bucks. Again, this is his uh, Topps Chrome number 169 from 2017 in PSA 10 condition. It's not the best looking card, though, I must say. Every time I no, see it, not. I think of the Conseco accident every time I see it. <laughs> I think of, like, the ball's going to hit him in the head and, like... Yeah. It's not a good card, eh? So like, here's the thing. In the last year, it's up. In the last six months, it's only up 20%. In the last three months, it's down. down. You would have lost. It's down. So Timing. you had to have sold it basically during the playoffs. Yeah. If you didn't sell it, like, right before. So if you were actually, and this is interesting, if you waited to find out whether or not he or Shohei won the MVP, yeah, yeah. you were losing money. Yeah. But if you sold it at the height... Which, again, like, this is me saying, and I, I told you this many times, take your profits when you can take your profits. If your yeah. profits are that good, don't be selfish. Should have told me that with crypto. Don't be selfish. Like, honestly, yeah. for Christmas, if you rip something awesome that from a product that another. just came out, sell it. We saw mm-hmm. we saw how big Zion dipped. Yeah. Zion I did that with Tatis. I apologize. I graded those beauty Tatis, got them for 6 bucks, sold them for 300 Got rid of him, and then he got caught with roids. So that was good. That's a win. I took profits, but I will say, because I'm a long-term collector and investor, it kind of go hand in hand for me. I am holding them long-term. Mm. So even with Zion, yeah, I knew I could have got out pretty quickly, but I believe he's going to be good for the next ten years. So that's my bet on that. Um, so Aaron Judge, would you recommend him now, putting a five to ten year bet Absolutely. on? Absolutely. Listen, he's down. 50, actually, I'm, I'm looking at this. So he's, now's the time to buy. Or in even, the last three or months, he's down 54%. Even to wait a little bit, right? Percent. Yeah. So to me, if he's down 54% and if he goes up 25%, boom, you got a 25% gain. When would you... Discounts. When would you be picking up Aaron Judge for the next, for the long term? When would you... January. 
you you January you, because why? February is spring training, and then the next thing you know, the season starts. Right? He all the news with him is gone. He already won MVP. He yeah. already signed the long term contract with the Yankees. Um, he's on time. So I mean. people aren't really thinking of him. You want to pick up on people while people aren't talking about them. Right? Think of it this way: if you're going to pick up the Christmas tree, you don't go pick up a Christmas tree December first. You go pick it up in August. You just do. Yeah. Discounts. You pick up things out of season. If you're going to pick up a winter coat for your kid, you don't go pick it up when it starts snowing. Pick it up in, you yeah. know, go to the store and pick it up in, you know, June, July, August, whatever. Yeah. Well, the prime pick example would be Boxing Day, right? The day that after too. Christmas, they're like, we have all this product. We're going to sell it for 80% off. Exactly. No Christmas, we should be selling, celebrating Christmas as a family two days after. I agree. Boxing Day, we get all of our gifts. On the yeah. 27th, we have Christmas, and we buy a turkey for 12 cents. Yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm happy with that. Mitch just solved Christmas. I just solved Christmas. For everyone. If you're doing Christmas on the 25th, you're an idiot. You could be <laughs> buying cards. So next Christmas, <laughs> do not celebrate on the 25th. If you're complaining that you can't pick up an Aaron Judge card, it's because you're celebrating Christmas on the wrong day. It's not the 25th, it's 27th. Officially. Put it yeah. up on the screen. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to the next topic. Mitch, we're going to talk some National Football League. Brady. Tom Brady. Because here's the crazy thing. Thank God. Thing. He's the only player I know in the NFL. Here's the so. crazy thing, right? Uh, I'm going to bring it up here. Long story short, as I bring this up, uh, NFL standings. So, Tom Brady, my dad and I were actually speaking about this the other day. Brady, Brady, We're like, Brady. Brady's not even playing well, but he's going to make the playoffs. He always does. Dude, he always finds his team, a way to win. Look, look at this. His team is 6-8, and eight and they're leading their division. So, regardless, this is what we were saying. Mm -hmm. Is Tom Brady kind of knowingly, with only a few weeks left in the regular season, is he kind of sitting back, chilling, relaxing, knowing, you know what, I'm not going to turn on, almost like LeBron, right? LeBron kind of cruises through the regular season, and then boom, game time, playoff time, puts on that, you know, game mode face, 100%. and starts winning. 100%. Is Tom Brady gonna do that? Because think about it, he he's gonna win the division, so they're still gonna get a really good matchup. Their division's awful. Awful. And, the, and Lions aren't even in their division too. Uh, Lions, Lions are gonna are make playoffs too. Right. It's a crazy year. Yeah, it's a weird year. Um, what I will say though is, I think Brady. They don't is even just have the winner. most points for. Brady's a winner, and he's frustrated because of last year, because of what happened. He didn't make it. Mm. I think there's a good chance he'll make it. If he doesn't, if he doesn't win this year. I think he's. I think he's gonna really. Consider he gave. Things. He gave up his relationship with his wife and he, his kids. He gave up his kids. He gave up his wife. He lost ten billion dollars in crypto. Like this guy has just had he, awful year. You got to know when to get out. Like when those things start happening, you got to realize, hey, I'm 45. You know, why don't I just retire and still be the goat? Like nobody's gonna catch him for a long time. I agree. Uh, if but I was, if I was also, Tom Brady after I won with also, the Bucks, also he knows what he's doing. He's also not an idiot. Let's be honest here. The guy knows what he's doing. He is literally 45 years old. Yeah. I think we just looked it up a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, to think that you could be 45 and be one of the best quarterbacks, that seems kind of odd to me. But we are in this new era. And he may be one of the best, better athletes we, we've seen in a while, at least 45. while using his head. Yeah. Um, so here's my thing. I don't think we need to debate it. Personally, I think mm. he's the GOAT of quarterbacks. Could he of, win this year? I, I think so. And, and here's the really? scary part, right? Because as I look this up, uh, his his team being the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they actually scored the least amount of points in their division. But I have the a prediction. defense is good, right? I have a prediction, But though. the defense is good. So I think Tom Brady is going to, out of the blue, I'm not saying Antonio Brown's going to come back and yeah. they'll have that connection. No. But I, what I'm saying is... He'll, he'll make, like, if he can make Bert, uh, Burkhead or Whitehead or whatever the hell his name is look like a stud. And mm -hmm. Julian Edelman, who was, he was good. But well, my point is, he doesn't need this phenomenal wide receiver in Justin Jefferson to win games. He'll throw yeah. the ball to anyone. He'll probably call up Gronk and be like, Gronk, like, I need you back. And Gronk will turn into, you know, the next Hall of Famer that yeah. Gronk is. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, they're going to win the division. They're going to get a really good matchup. He's only got to win like four games to win the Super Bowl from that point. That's true. That's still a lot. Um, I just think, though, just this is just based on what I think. I don't follow it as close as you do. Mm. I just I have a vision that Burrow 
in Mahomes are going to be facing each other. I don't know if that's even Again. Ooh, that'd possible. Be great. No, yep. no, I mean in the finals, Burroughs, Mahomes, and I see Burroughs winning. I, I think this guy, if he's going to win, I think it's going to have to be over the next couple of years, then he might fade off a bit. That's just how I feel. Well, I mean, you have... That's my prediction. So, so if that happens, So it can't that be would in be, the Super Bowl, but it could be, nice. be very similar to last season where the winner goes to the Super Bowl. I think they're both in the good. AFC. Yeah. Uh, to me, so th- th- this is what I wanted to bring up, right? I think it's very interesting, and this is... I kind of want to teeter-totter off of, uh, you know, Tom Brady. Because mm-hmm. to me right now... Career-wise, Brady's the GOAT. But who's the next GOAT? You have some phenomenal quarterbacks. You got uh, Justin Herbert. I don't think he's there. You got Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, as we both discussed, who's playing very well right now. And then, obviously, Patrick Mahomes. So my question is, who's the next GOAT? Who's Who's the next GOAT? Because Mahomes has the one Super Bowl. Burrow, basically, in his first healthy season made it there mm-hmm. while beating Mahomes, right? So that's that's pretty dope. Who, who's going to be the next GOAT? If you had to pick between any quarterback, I've kind of listed off three of who I think, but who do you think? Um, Chargers quarterback. So you, you think Justin is, Herbert? Herbert. I saw Herbert play. He may be one of the... He, he may do it. I think he's pretty young too. He is. Um, but I'm, I'm not just saying this. I think there's something about Burrow. Burrow is like... Is probably the next guy or or him. Burrow. So it's gonna be Burrow or it's going to be, um, yeah, the Chargers quarterback. For, I keep forgetting Herbert. <laughs> Justin, Justin Herbert. Herbert. Yeah, he's yeah. he's really good. He's very talented. Um, he's a little bit different in the way he plays. Like I see Burrow as like an all around. He's just kind of got the mindset. He's like a stud. <clears throat> he's more of like a stud. And then you have Herbert, who's just. Man, I just think that guy's he's just got he's just got like a, a, the vision for it. So so for me, I think the thing the thing that Burrow has going for him, he's a, he's a pardon me, he's an Ohio boy, born and raised, right? Mm-hmm. Graduated from Ohio State, obviously ended up moving on to LSU, but now he's back in Ohio. He's doing all this stuff whereas Mahomes <coughs> pardon me. The thing with Mahomes is he's kind of moving back and forth. He doesn't really have those ties. Burrow's playing for his home state, okay? In, like I said, in his first full, like, healthy season, made yeah. it to the Super Bowl. And obviously, they lost in heartbreaking fashion. Yeah. And that is what it is. But th- this is the guy who no one has ever won a Super Bowl, Heisman, and college football national championship. Really? He, I didn't like, know he, that. He's yeah. going to be the first one to do it. That's what I mean. Like, he's just an all-around stud. He seems to have that mindset. He's coming off that injury. Also coming off of the fact that he did get so close, but still so far. Yeah. I think that's a lot of that's a lot of knowledge in in yeah. anger and. No, I will say this: know. he's already twenty six, and obviously he's old now. That, he's that's in his he's prime. That's not old. It's not washed up. What I'm saying though is card wise. I don't, dude. He's twenty six, dude. He's nineteen years okay, but, younger than Brady. But hear me out, right? When you like, you want to collect the guys who win, like two plus Super Bowls, right? Yeah, yeah. If he doesn't do it this year, all of a sudden he's twenty seven. If he doesn't do it then, all of a sudden he's twenty eight. Let's say he wins at twenty eight. You're very not likely to win back to back. Then the next thing you know, you're pushing thirty, yeah, yeah. and quarterbacks don't really last till past thirty two. Yeah, unless there's obviously he's got to avoid injuries. Do it. He's got to avoid injuries. That's what he's I'm saying. Only one team wins the Super Bowl each year. Yeah, he's he's just got to make sure he doesn't hang out with Johnny Manziel off the field, stuff like that. So he'll be fine. Yeah. That, so yeah. anyway, I, I think we can both agree. Burrow. Uh, my thing with Josh Allen is he plays for a great team. He really does, but. Uh, the Bills always find a way to kind of choke a little bit. Yeah, always find a way. So, kind of like the Leafs. You know, let's talk about the Leafs. Let's talk about the Leafs. Switching right. sports here. Uh, now we're going to be talking about Mitch's favorite team. I can't Minhaki, believe it. Yep. It's awful because through all your years of life, you continuously like you do Dude. it to yourself. Mitch I is a Toronto anything. Maple Leafs they, fan. They should put me out there in, Mitch, in some of these games. Let's Google it. Let's Google it. You, I don't you know get what it is nuts? I remember. When they were up like four one or four nothing to sh- to the Bruins, and I remember I was living in the states at the time, and I remember closing my laptop and I'm like, they pulled it off next round, mm. and then somebody said they lost. I'm like, I thought it was a joke. I actually couldn't believe this. They literally blew it that year, mm. and that was sad. 
All right, so how old were you Why in 2004? Why are we pulling up these stats? How old were you in 2004? Who's making up these stats? That's not a stat. It's a real stat. How old were you in 2004? You were born in what, 93? Yeah. So, dude, That's you were 11. Though. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like 10. The last eight. time the Toronto Maple Leafs won a playoff series, he was 11. Yeah. That if, is a long what did time I tell ago. You, what did I tell you a couple weeks ago? You said that the Leafs are going to win the Stanley Cup. No, I said Matthews is going to hoist the cup specifically. I have a vision. Matthews isn't even the captain. Yeah, but he's going to get to hoist the cup. Well, so will the I head coach. I told you he was a captain. So will the head coach. I know, but it sounds better. It sounds <laughs> spectacular. Ian, 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 it brings up the value of my card if they take oh, a photo. and Because so, I've got Matthews 9... What grade is your Matthews 9.5? Don't have one. There you go. Don't have one. But regardless, uh, we, we need to talk about this because here in Canada, the by far... By far the biggest hockey market, the biggest hockey team, Toronto. the one that everyone shares for, even if you're in Montreal or any other Canadian city for that matter, is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. But here's the thing. The Maple Leafs, so like we're, we want to talk about Austin Matthews because last year he obviously, uh, you know, set the Leafs record for most yeah. goals in he got franchise history. Year, yeah. And he was phenomenal. But now I think he's having a down year, which is crazy to say for Austin Matthews. But compared to last year... No. It's a down year. And more specifically, what what's his card price going to do if he can't get past the first all right. round? All right, first off, first off. Honestly, what's, what's it going to do? I do have an issue with the down year. Not, not that I'm not saying he's not doing as good as last year, but he had a rough start. Mm -hmm. His start was awful, yeah. but he's been picking up. Sure. So right now, at this current time, he's he's playing well. He's actually playing well because I, I picked up on a couple games. I'll watch a live stream here here and there. And I've noticed that he was just missing the net. He's shooting the puck, and I'm like, bro, like, are you even trying to score? Like, nope. like he must be, like, he's got the mafia on him or something. The mustache like, is getting in the way. Yeah, yeah. His mustache is too long. It's getting in front of his eye. He's yeah. trying to, like, hit the net. And, and what's he dressing like? Oh, yeah, my all, goodness. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even Balenciaga was like, this is too much for us. We're going to stick to the kid stuff. So, anyways, um, Matthews, though, he... Uh, He's not doing as good as last year, but he is picking up. And I think from now, December till the rest of the year, he's going to be fine. So, yeah, no. I, over Overall, I, I his agree. card prices, though. His card prices. Let's look it up. I still think long term, it's a good time to get Matthews. Um, but again, he's also at that, that point in time where if you bought his cards four or five years ago, this would be a good time to get out because you would be in profit, I feel. I feel like his cards are just steadily going up and maybe they're down a bit now. All right, let's look up Austin Matthews cards. Uh, yeah, PSA uh, 10. I think PSA yeah. 10 would be. Yeah. Okay, so this is the 2016 Upper Deck Austin Matthews number 201. It's gotta be stagnant. This PSA year. 10 Young Guns. First and foremost, that pop report, 2,700. That's, wow, that's very low. low. That's, yeah. that's low, let's so, be honest. So that's equivalent to getting Zion Silver versus his base. Yeah. His market cap is actually 2.92 million. So, so think about it this way. His GOAT card, there's 2,000 total, whereas Zion has 25,000, and that's yep. including the prisms. So that, that shows you there's a, a huge level of, uh, I mean, obviously there's less demand in hockey. Yeah, there's but, some scarcity. Yeah. Uh, over the last three months, his card is down 450 bucks, mm -hmm. uh, which is 30% price change. Not, not what you want to see. Um, over the last six months, Mm -hmm. Right around the same, four hundred bucks. Go to a year though, or two in years. one year, it's right around the same. Yeah. So his card prices is go have to go to like two years or max. I'd sure. like to see that. Yeah, let's go to two years. Yeah, there you go. So that's a big difference. So I picked up his card just before that even. So that was a good time. Wow. That's why I even said that. So right now, mm. say that because I just told them too. I said if you picked up this card three four years ago, you may want to sell it now, get your profit. Right. But if you're holding long term, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. So uh, as I bring it up raw too, over the last two years, it's up. Over mm. the last year, it's down 36% over wow. six months, down 23%. It's an accumulation so it's period. This is what I've been saying. Now's the time to stack some cash, try to time the market, mm. and get in now. Because you're not going to see those huge gains, yeah. but you're going to be in before the next big run happens. That's what it's about. It's no, all about placement. That's because, what I think. That's think about think. it, right? If it's down over the last three months, what did we say? Over the last three months, this card is down right around like 25%, right? 
Well, what happens if and when they actually win a playoff series? It's going to rise. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. will rise. What's so, going to happen? Okay, when he scores 500 goals, let's say he's healthy, he's going to get so, 500 goals. So we're goals. talking long run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's say he gets 500 goals. This is five, six years from now. Is maybe even sooner. If he gets 500 goals, are his card prices going to be double? Double? Or are they going to be worth more or less than today? You know what I mean? It's tough so to you, have, say. you have to you have to think about it in those ways. That's at least what I do. If you're short term, I probably wouldn't even be buying any now. But if you're long term, yeah. it gives you more flexibility to to not have to tie things. He'll get 500 goals as we speak. He's actually got 275, and he's only played 439 career games. Yeah. So this is a guy who's just scoring at an elite level. Uh, points wise, right? He's got 37 points he's in 32 young, games. How old is he? Uh, he is 25 years old. Yeah. See, I know Matthews. Right. But what I'm saying is it's the 16 goals through 32 games. That's what's concerning because that puts him on, it's still a 40-goal pace. But coming off of a 60-goal season, if you're scoring 40, yes, it's phenomenal, and almost anyone else in the NHL would love to have that. But as a collector from that standpoint, people are kind of looking at Matthews as, yeah, oh my he goodness. Had a, he had a rough is, start. Is, is he regressing? Is he not performing well? And again, we know that from not being casuals, but the casuals will look at it as, mm -hmm. oh man, like Matthews is starting to regress a little bit here. So yeah, absolutely. I think it would actually be a relatively good time to pick up his card and his young gun specifically. That's just me because, yeah. you know, I, I look at the Leafs and again, I think their bottom six is really weak. Uh, and I've promised myself a few years ago, I'm not ever going to say anymore that the Leafs are going to win a playoff series until they actually do it, because every year I think they're going to do it, they don't. So we'll see. Yeah. But they need to. Uh, I, I, I think if he scores 500 career goals, I think he's not going to do it in a Toronto Maple Leafs sweater, if yeah. I'm being completely honest with you. Yeah. I think he's going to move away from the largest hockey market, largest fan base. He'll go to Arizona, his hometown. I think so, but regardless, his card prices, if he moves out of the largest fan base in the world for hockey, nah, it's not going to be good for his card prices. They're no. going to dip, yeah. which means I'll pick some up. But Yeah. So that's interesting. That is interesting. And it looks like he's getting the salary of like a WNBA player too. Well, what that, is that? So there's a cap hit, right? I mean, his cap hit, he's yeah. basically one of the highest paid players in the league, meaning... You know, yeah, he now, he has, he's accounts for ten percent. So of, they're paying him nine hundred twenty-five thousand a year. It just seems weird that he's not making a million. Like, a lot of people like, have front-loaded and back-loaded things like that. So if yeah. you look at Ovi, Ovi's technically not even making that either. So Ovi's making a lot more though, isn't he? Uh, let's look it up. I mean, granted, I don't feel bad. That's like forty x. So if we look up Ovechkin, let's look up Ovechkin. Oh, there you go. So that's that's the way that this season is structured. Uh, he's making nine mil. Yeah, that's ten times more. Yeah, but that's just what this is structured. But Ovi is also thirty-seven. Think about that. Hmm. Matthews is twelve years younger. They're they're basically almost in different eras. Almost. Yeah, crazy. O so, Ovi's a part of everybody's era now. So how about he's that, right? Else. So now we're talking about the scoring. People goal. need to talk about this more. By the way, I you and I've been talking about this since. Well, Since we were, we're in high school, so uh, that's at least I was only in high school with you up until 2010. So we were at least talking about it in 2010. So when you look at that, he was only in the league a few years. But He's phenomenal this year. By the way, season. if you look at Gretzky's numbers when he was 37, he was not doing this. No. Just saying. No. So he, he, he only needs 94 more goals to tie the greatest hockey player of all time in Wayne Gretzky. Bro, he's going to do it. Well, that's what I, I'm saying. He's going I to think, do it. I my prediction is he's gonna. He's. I think yeah. he's gonna do. I think he listen. might get a thousand goals. Listen, he's not think, gonna fall off. No, no, no. From fifty to like ten. He's I think. Not gonna I think do he's that. gonna play at least six more years. I, six more. He's thirty-seven. I, I think he's gonna be. No. I think he's gonna get a thousand goals. People think I'm nuts. I think he's gonna get two hundred more goals. Listen, I mean, it could only take him four more years. I think Alex Ovechkin, I'm making the prediction now. Right. I know it sounds ridiculous. You're going to think of like an old Russian hockey player trying to like score. This guy is the one guy who could get a thousand goals. I think you're insane. I do too. But, <laughs> but if there's I one guy to do it, if there's one guy 
that just has the overall capacity to do it. It's him. He's he's also able to fight, guys. He's got he's got the speed. He's Look got, at all these awards. He's got the best shot. He's got that one time advantage when they're on the power play. He's incredible. Six, seven, eight, nine Who times. Who does that? So nine Who times. Who won the Maurice the last three years? Nine times he's had the most goals. And here's the th crazy thing. You got to admit, like that's said, Jordan. That's Jordan stuff. You put that on a resume, uh -huh. you are hired when you walk in the door. You're hired. I just read your resume. You don't even need to sit down. Get out of here. Go score more goals. Yeah. You are hired. Well, last year he scored 50 goals. So when we did the math, right, we put out an episode on 35. Red Cape Sports. Yeah. And people were like, oh, he's not going to average 37 goals. And I said, you're thinking about it wrong. He doesn't need to average 37. He's going to average 50. Because this year he's going to score 50. You did meaning, say that, yeah. Meaning that the average goes down. So you can't view it as, right? You can't view it as, well, he needs 94 more goals, so yeah. divide that by three. That's not the way to look at it. The way to look at it is he's he's already got 20 goals this season in 34 games. He's hitting 50. Bird, Bird I'm, I'm not he kidding. Is. I actually think that Alexander Ovechkin will score a thousand goals. And that sounds The ludicrous. more I'm thinking about it, the more I think he that could. That sounds ludicrous, but it's one of those things where it's like yeah. you have, you just have the one guy who could maybe do it where it doesn't even sound ridiculous. Just mathematically, right. it's possible. If, if that's if he stays at the capacity well, at he is now, okay. which he probably won't. His contract but. goes until 2025, okay? Three, so, four more years. Let's say three more years at... But an average of 40 goals, that's 40, 80, 120, so he'd still be 80 short. However, mm -hmm. if he puts up like 55 or 60 goals, that gets him closer and closer yeah, and yeah. closer. He has to have a and couple then, of big years. Of what course. I'm telling you is if he's 40 years old and he's only like 36 goals away, he'll do it. He's he'll the, play. That's he'll what just I'm play. saying. That's what I'm saying. Why not? He's the guy, if you look, if you look at the way he plays specifically, mm. He, he'll also drop the mitts, dude. He doesn't care about his teeth. Yeah. He doesn't care about his freaking knee. Yeah. What He's he can't have playing, is this dude. COVID year. This COVID year screwed him over because yeah, there was only 45 games. That's, an, that's another thing. That's another thing. Yeah. He's been and he had a lockout. In the lockout, he goes and plays in Russia. Oh, crazy. You never know what's going to happen, but this is me saying, like, perfect scenario in the fact that he's healthy, that he's still performing yeah. well, he still gets some breaks. Um, but... Again, it comes down to how long he's going to play. Because one guy who this reminds me of, and I know it's completely different sports positions, mm -hmm. is Nolan Ryan. He yeah. just, he not only was was like the best, but he just outlasted everybody. Mm. He's, there's, a, there's a thing of durability that comes with it. If you're a player that gets injured, you're just not going to have a good career regardless. Oh, no. Think about um, who was who the guy that played both sports. Like we, we have... Um, Bo Jackson? Bo Jackson, man. He's a guy... That, man, if he just didn't have that one injury, bro, he could have done different oh, things. Oh, I agree. Um, yep. So just think about it that way. Injuries do play a big role. Another guy, Mario Lemieux, if he didn't get hurt, if he didn't have cancer and all that, he literally would have scored 1,000 goals, hands down. If you look at the math, if you look at how much better he was than everybody else, I saw him play live. He didn't score. No, um, but I did crazy, see him crazy. play in Toronto. And I'm like, this is this is a different human being. So here's the thing. Mario Lemieux, in only 915 games, finished his career with 690 goals. So he's still only 210 goals away from Ovi in considerably less games. Yeah, like he broke. Considerably. He Ovi's didn't even play, what, those three years there? Like what's going three on? Three years there? in a row he never played. Because he had cancer, I think, right? Uh, he had the knee issue, and then he was trying to buy the team. And I thought he had back cancer or something. Craziness. Anyways, what was his highest goal? Didn't he score like 90 goals one year? Uh, 85. 85, 85 goals. 85, in 68, 89, 89, 50. Yeah. Yeah. But Crazy. the thing is, he was doing that pretty consistently. Yeah. But again, it's easier to look back and say, if there's one guy to do it, Alexander Ovechkin, he's the one guy that... I'm just saying he could he could get a thousand goals. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm here to say it. Let's hope we're right. You guys heard it here first. Hey, cheers to that one. Ovi, a thousand goals. The more you spoke, the more I was on board. That's what I mean, man. I'm speaking it into plus. existence. Nine fifty plus. I think he can do All it. All right, last topic we have. <laughs> we're gonna talk about Patty Pimblin, baby. Patty the baddie. 
This guy is hilarious, by the way. Oh, he's. Hilarious. I do not know a lot about him. All I know, actually, is that what's his record? He's a great fighter. By Twenty-three the way. and zero, which means, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, in the middle. So he's yeah, never he lost. Lo no, he lost three times, right? No, that those are ties. Is it? Are you yes. sure? Yes. Let's I don't see. know. I think he lost three times. It could be. So it was like a no decision kind of thing. I know he's a good fighter. But anyways, this guy has the trash talking. He's got the... I don't know. He's just okay, got so we swag. have lost three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. I was just saying, because I, I think I saw that with um, yes. other guys. That's Regardless. Fine. Honest mistake. Um, they do make it confusing. So he is 27. Because in young. hockey. Anyway. But what do you like most about Patty the Batty Bird? What I love about Patty the Batty is, first and foremost, the guy, the guy's hilarious, right? His voice, half the time, I have no idea what he's saying. But yeah. more importantly, it was that TikTok little interview I saw where he's he's literally eating, like, in the post-conference interview. He's eating the pizza. And he's like, he's like, why in the world would I stop eating like this? He goes, I love fighting, but I'm never going to stop eating like this. Yeah. Didn't he have a problem trying to cut weight because he, he gains too like, But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's something if, okay, else. Think about how many guys, Wayne Gretzky, uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, all these yeah. guys, they gave up stuff they loved in order to be great. He's not giving up anything. No, he's and not. And he's still great. He is. He's not giving up pizza, tacos, anything like that. Granted, I must say, though, you think of, you, I bring in the John Jones idea, though, the fact that when you're fighting somebody, though, mm -hmm. that is a different level of sports. Like, oh. I'm not saying, I'm not going to pull a Dana White and say that it's soccer is not athletic and mixed martial arts is the most whatever. Sure. But there is more on the line when you're fighting versus dunking a ball. Like, you have to give it to them. This yeah. is this is a sport where you're fist fighting another person. Like, you're fighting some of the best killers in mm -hmm. the world, so to speak. Um, I think I think you got to be able to have some kind of vice where you can let go. Granted, he's probably not snorting coke like John Jones, but it is true though in the sense that you know you have to kind of de-stress a little bit because I mean you're going in to fight, fight, yeah. and, and you're not just fighting where nobody's watching it. This is on TV, right? So you're like, man, what if I but, what but, if I get knocked out in front of people? But that, that to me, like the way that he eats and the way that he goes about his training. It just it screams to me confidence. So what are we talking about with Patty the Batty? Is, is this a thing where we should be looking up his cards and saying should you Let's be see. picking up Patty the Batty cards? Because first off, this guy um, has a really good record, and he did he came in at a good time. You have McGregor, um, Conor McGregor, kind of has left the scene, so to yes. speak. He's doing his own thing. Um, so this is a good time for Patty the Batty to kind of like. Make his mark. You also have Habib Nurmagomedov. He left. How do I pronounce Nurmagomedov? But I can't say any other name. Nurmagomedov or something like that. Yeah. It's, I just it's call him Habib, Habib. Nurmagomedov. Yeah. So, anyways, his cards look cheap. They're so cheap. So it's a good card. The twenty the the issue is the card just came out in twenty twenty two. Isn't that Ron from Harry Potter? Right? though? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> so that's just it, right? Like uh, rookie card, right? With the rated rookie. Uh, of the Donruss UFC card. It's going for right around 20 bucks. Buy it now. Um, but here's the thing. like, He wasn't a rookie in 2022. So UFC and uh, Panini, or pardon me, Donruss, yeah. they dropped the ball on this. Yeah. I'm telling you. It's very similar to like previous episodes that we've done. Card? It's like soccer cards when it's like yeah. a Lionel Messi. A lot of people considered his 2014 World Cup card because it was almost like the first one, yeah. so to speak. You know, that's it's not a rookie. And it's a very similar to, like, Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. Lewis Hamilton's been driving F1 cars for many, many, many years. He's been a world champion, like, six times. And then these cars come out, and they're like, Peep. this is your rookie? So there's an issue with it. Pe people have taken cards more seriously, though. This, because of the whole rise of sports mm. cards, we people are now, like we talked about, you should have the R logo, the rookie logo. Because yeah. a lot, UFC is the prime example of not being able to identify which card is a rookie card. Well, look, look at this. Look at Khabib's he's, cards. He, he's it's got very a hard select, to identify. He's got a prism. Mm -hmm. He's got a Donruss. And the thing with um, these cards too, they always have their first auto cards. Those are a big deal. And they're not even, I don't even know if it says rookie on there, but it's their first auto. That's a big deal. Yep. Um, granted, I don't know for, for his year, he seems to have the rookie logo. But he is funny, man. You know, he's like, Oh, I'm going to beat them. You know, why do I only have one rookie card? I'll bring a fight them in the ring. Yeah. 
I mean, this guy is funny, man. Like, there's kabooms and all that. But what I'm saying is, like, as great as this guy is, and UFC is one of the quickest growing sports and one of the better guys, and the card prices aren't moving. So this is what I'm saying. Like, you can love sports. It's like if Paul McBeth had a rookie card, which I guess he does, the Alan Ginter, yeah. it's not going for anything. So you can be the yeah. goat at it a is. sport, the but if the ones, sport's yeah. not yeah. picking up, I, I don't know, man. Yeah. This is interesting. The thing is, though, this guy is pretty legit. Like, I think he would be a good buy. I would, I would put my bets that you're better off buying him than not buying him now. I don't know. I... I think I think if you get the right card, granted I haven't done the research. We're not telling you to get his card. That's crazy. But I would put a bet on if you were to get his nice Prism rookie card, that would be a card I would pick up for four bucks. It's p- going for four test. bucks. It's There's crazy. no way you cannot resell that if he continues to do what he's doing. That's what if, I'm saying. There might if, be an opportunity and, here. And it always comes down to this: Is he going to continue to do what he's doing? I mean, one bad fight, man, could really ruin him too, because. You never know. You never know. But I mean, you look at a PSA A PSA 10 for 38 bucks. And the thing (laughs) is about this guy, he is definitely starting to rise. He's exciting. He's eccentric. He's honest. One thing about him that people like is he's honest. He's not fake. Um, There's something exciting about about this guy. He's he's literally the next McGregor in that sense, right? Absolutely. Um, Yeah, in terms of other topics... (laughs) <laughs> I thought you'd be oh interested Oh my god, in I'm going to buy his cards. I had no idea. I thought you'd be interested in this. Did you see that guy's hands too? All We're right. talking about Charlie Woods. <laughs> so Tiger Woods' son. Is that even going to be considered? Here's another thing now. I'm now, just saying. Now you have to think about it this way too. Now cameras are more accessible. We have more information. Charlie Woods. Is this <laughs> going to be considered <laughs> his rookie this card? This is going to be he's his 13, rookie. right? He's like 13 or 14. He's, he's definitely a minor. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so... All right. I'll <laughs> well, Google I can say it like that. He's 13, I'm pretty sure. I, I, all I'm saying I is... I already young. researched because I'm like, does he have a rookie card? I did look it up. Because me and Bird, we will literally be like, dude, this he's kid... He's 13. Bird will literally message me. He'll be like, dude, this kid's seven years old. You should be looking into him. I'm like, who is this Mukoko guy? He's not seven, but yeah, he's but he, thirteen. Yeah, he's thirteen. He's thirteen. Yeah, crazy. So anyway, um, I'm just bringing this up because if you look at like, uh, but man, he's if got you look the at swing. Serena Williams, right? Serena Williams, her like rookie card. A lot of people consider it to be the Sports Illustrated kids card. So this really? card is very similar. It's like this hot shot. I would say buy. Card. I would. I think this kid. This kid. I've seen him. I've seen him golf a couple times. Just like on, incredible on YouTube. He's legit. This isn't one of those things where it's like, oh, it's his it, twenty like, bucks. This is like getting Vlad <laughs> Jr. when he's a when he's like in the womb. Yeah. So do we? That's what I'm saying, right? Because if he turns out to be like his dad in Tiger Woods, now is he going to have a rookie though? Like, I, w- I want to get his rookie. I don't look. It looks like he's wearing a science lab <laughs> jacket thing. Like, okay, these cards are egregious to They're say the least. Bucks. There's something wrong. That's all I'm saying. All right, I would bucks. not buy Charlie Woods' cards yet, I don't think. Does he, is that a real autograph, though? I would buy that. Uh, it's fake. you got to be fake. Yeah, it's a fake. Okay. When Charlie Woods has his authentic PGA card, first off, you'll know that he is as good as what we think he will. He's going to be good. He's going to be incredible. My God, he's incredible now. No, yeah. he'll be good. He'll be good. He got an eagle on, like, a pro tour course the other day. An eagle. Golf is hard, man. I, he's got the swing. So anyway, yeah. what, what we're saying is sometimes Bird. it pays to know of guys while they're 16 and under. Vlad. It sounds crazy, yeah, it's but 13, we've hit on a few guys. He's 13 year, years old, too young to be prospecting for potential rookies. I don't think so. Alabama does Bedard. it. But Dard was 14. Bird's like, Bird called me. He's like, just saw this kid. He's 14. I'm going to be buying his cards. I'm like, geez, man, where are you recruiting these kids at daycares? Well, look at this. Bedard does have rookie cards. Pre-rookie cards. Yeah, but we can't be from buying From the CHL. Them. Yeah, guys, you all buy the CHL card. <laughs> we're not. We'll buy his young gun. Yep. We're going to be honest with you. You should get his young gun um, if you're watching this. Absolutely. In hockey, you want to get the young gun or the cup cards, the numbered. But get the young gun. Just stick to the young gun. If you can get a clear cut, that's a huge win as well. Yeah. So... 
Anyway, that's uh, that's going to do it for this podcast installment of Red Cape Sports. We hope that you all enjoyed. Uh, listen, if you guys made it this far to the video, definitely go ahead and hit the like button. If you guys aren't already, because I believe it's like 62% of people who watch our videos are not actually subscribed to us. Yeah. So kind, kind reminder, you know, hit subscribe. Uh, and then, of course, for those of you listening to us, thank you so much for listening. Uh, and with that being said, we'll see you guys in the next video. And I wanted to mention one more thing. You could check us out on Spotify. How will they find us there? Yeah. Check us out on Spotify. Or if you guys are Apple lovers, you can also check us out on Apple Podcasts and uh, whatnot. So, and like we said, do have an online course. So go to Udemy, type in sports cards, Red Cape Sports. You will find us there. Yeah. So, you know, might be a really good gift for yourself or for a loved one, whoever you want for these holidays. Uh, and I believe right now we got a promo. It's a really good deal. So anyway, thank you all so much for tuning in, listening, watching the whole nine yards. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Well, that does it for this installment of Red Cape Sports. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave us a thumbs up. It really helps us out to grow the channel and to reach more people who love sports card collecting as yourself. And just a reminder, if you guys are interested in learning more than just what we put out here on YouTube, down below in the video description, there is a link to our Udemy course. Ultimately there, you guys can learn tons of different things on how to collect sports cards, protect them, and ultimately invest in the sports card industry. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Till next time.